and it usually works really, really well um, when you can get a bunch of complex settings correct. And yeah. today, today wasn't that day, so. <laughs> hey, you wouldn't want to trust me trying to use that crap. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's annoying. So what's up, brother? How are you? I'm great, man. How are you? Thank you so much for having me, Clint. Hell yeah, dude. Um, uh-oh, pushing too many buttons here. <laughs> Um, yeah, man, absolutely, dude. Uh, I got your soap like four days ago. I've been using it every day. I really like it. Um, so I'm excited to talk to you about that and uh, and your work with San Pedro in general um, and some different things. So uh, why don't you just uh, briefly introduce yourself? First of all, welcome to Psychedelicast. Uh, David, why don't you introduce yourself to listeners and we'll kind of dig a little deeper in there. Yeah, my name's uh, my name's David Balakwi. I um I'm 35 years old. I started working, collecting San Pedro about six years ago. It kind of helped me, um, pull me out of a hole I was in, you know? Little did I know when I first started collecting it, it was going to be, um, my best companion. Um, and yeah, I just started collecting like crazy. And then I started using the medicine after about two years. And, um, through using the medicine is how I got the idea to make this soap. Um, I would just notice how exfoliating it would be on my hands, whether it was just uh, open wound cutting that I was holding or preparing medicine. Um, the idea has been on my brain for a couple years now, actually. And I, just last month or so, I decided um, I wanted to go for it and try to make soap. So here we are, man. Um, I just started digging deeper into thinking about it. And I'm kind of doing like a, it's like a, um, a spirituality twist with um healing type of theme soaps you know um yeah. and i have any ideas for different types to come and stuff like this so it's ever growing and i'm still ever um learning how and learning about uh, making these new soaps you know definitely dude um i've, I've always been interested in doing I, i've always had some kind of little side gig or business i've been working on so just the <clears throat> entrepreneurship aspect is very interesting to me um but that's that's crazy. So you started collecting San Pedro before you had ever used San Pedro? Yep, that's correct. Um, I was just in a very low, lonely uh, point in my life. And I wanted to find like a companion, you know, I wanted to find something that could grow old with me. And I've always been fond of growing stuff. So um, I happened to, I just thought about cactus and I ran into San Pedro on the internet. And um, I was totally intrigued by the looks of it, the legality of growing it, and um, and just the spiritual use, how far it dates back, you know, the whole history on it. Um, it just totally captivated me. So, yeah, um, once I started growing these plants, you know, I live down here in southwest Florida, and I was all, I've always been uh, worked on the beach, partying every night after work, stuff like this, you know. Um, but once I started collecting these plants, they really started bringing me out of that whole um, being out with the crowd, partying, um, destroying myself, basically, you know. Yeah. So and, and that's just through growing them first, too, because they, they just taught me more of a structure to be home and and more self-care for myself by caring for them, you know. So. Um, so, yeah, just that alone before even experiencing the medicine was so much to me. And when I started realizing the lessons that this plant was teaching me, um, I just fell more in love with it, you know? Sure, and then, sure. so I came up, it was about two years after collecting, and I had um, I had a plant that, that, was cut, that was falling over, and it just called to me, you know? It just, um, it was my time to, to try the medicine for the first time. Um, before San Pedro, I've always played around with LSD and shrooms and stuff like this, you know? But it was always a recreational level, um, never never about a spiritual aspect to it, you know. Mm -hmm. It was more out with friends, um, doing having fun with it. But once I had this first um, experience with San Pedro, it opened up a whole new gate to myself. Um, and e and even this, this first time I had the medicine, this even pulled me more back to myself and um, helped me treasure myself more, you know. Mm -hmm. and, Obviously, after this experience, I fell even more in love with San Pedro. Um, so, yeah, I, then after that experience, I really got heavy into collecting. Um, 
worked with the medicine quite a few times after that, and it kept on developing me spiritually in a higher aspect. Um, and again, through this work is how I come to realize um, how the mucilage inside San Pedro can be so exfoliating through the, for the skin. You know, I'd always go and like strain, strain the brew, and I would just feel my skin be so soft on my hands from straining it. So, um, and it did, it always made a thought like, oh, wow, I bet this would be great for like lotion or, um, you know, something in this nature. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and yeah, through that, I just, um, I just really, it took me a long time to take the leap, but every time I'd prepare medicine or I'd um, get an open cutting on my hand, I would, I would just always take note of how soft it made my skin. And just last month, I finally said, okay, I'm going to make a soap, you know? And yeah, yeah, yeah. I really just did it for myself. I just wanted to see how it was, you know? But um, I, I did uh, different blends of essential oils with the soaps because I only knew how to make a bigger batch as far as um, um, directions, you know, and how much to use. So I decided to do a couple, two different batches with um, different blends of essential oils, and they came out awesome. I was like, man, this needs to be shared with people. This is just too great. Yeah. Um, and so I basically, for the most part, I sold those bars locally and just through a little circle of uh, plant friends on the internet and everybody loved it. So I'm like, man, maybe this is something I should pursue, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's when the thought of, of the theme, the theme type of soaps, you know, mixing the spirituality um, aspect names with it. Um, and yeah, it's all just seemed to be bubbling up. Now I'm just keep on having ideas of different types of soaps, how they can be cohesive with the spiritual world. Um, yeah, it's just uh, seeming to turn out to a very beautiful thing, you know? Yeah, dude, I agree with you. There's a lot that you just said there that I want to touch on. So let me pick out a few things. And um, I want to talk about the soap specifically because, yeah, I've, like I said, I've been using it the last few days. What is it inside the soap bar that like gives it that like exfoliating, like that rough? What is that? Uh, that rough is actually remnants of the cactus. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, that's yeah, awesome. I, I do. I powder the cactus with like a coffee grinder, uh -huh. and um, and I leave the um I leave so it's little pieces of the cactus skin basically. The okay. Whole, the whole inside of the cactus um pretty much dries out to a powder. But the skin also works as an exfoliant. So I was, I was thinking about straining it out, but I feel like it, it also contributes to um, exfoliating the skin. So I decided to leave it in there. Um, but yeah, it's just it's the skin, the outer skin of the San Pedro is what you're feeling. Um, right. I, I do uh, I do try to uh, tell everybody to use a washcloth or a lupa, you know, just because it's easier on the skin. By all means, if you want to rub it on your skin, you can. It just makes it feel a little rough you know i like it I, I just rub it i just use the soap straight up like that yeah, i've been putting yeah. the, i've been putting it on my hair like i, I use it on my whole body <laughs> yeah. well, i mean i'm gonna get into making um shampoos and stuff with it as well as i trot down this journey farther you know um, yeah. and it's only been a month so damn it damn it hang on one second dude <laughs> My message app just opened up because someone texted me and now it's like, bing, 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 <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Let me close this out real quick. Okay, I think we're good. Uh, yeah, dude, as you were talking just then, I was like, man, you know, I could see like, I could definitely see like a, a, a more like comprehensive line of products, dude. Like, I bet you that would like, not only I think is a good idea and it, and you have good intentions behind it, but you could probably make some serious money with that, like these these like festivals and things like that, and online, uh, promoting it through these like psychedelic and medicine Facebook groups, things like that. You could probably, you might, I think you really got something there, man. I, I totally agree. Yeah, the 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 farther future, um, I do look to make it. I do look to make it um, themed sets of soaps. So it'll be all from lotion, shampoo, conditioner. Um, so you could get a whole a whole set of astral of, of shampoo, soap, conditioner, lotion. So you have themed sets of, of all these things to give you your whole hygienic care. You know, yeah. I even want to get into face scrubs, stuff like this. But I feel like it's just uh, right now it's important for me to keep on to have different types of soap 
so that I can build off multiple different types of soap up to these theme soaps, you know? I yeah. feel like, again, it's just a month now, so I feel like I have a lot of attracting to still do, you know? Um, but like you said, I, I, I as well, I really think this can be something very special for people. Um, and I'm so thankful to be able to share it with people, you know, it's really Absolutely. a blessing. Tell me a little bit more about the themes that you've uh, created. Um, I, I've gotten four different bars from you. Can you just tell me a little bit about the concepts behind each? So, yeah. Um, so I'll, fir I'll first start with Awakening. Awakening is kind of self-explanatory, you know, um, it's made as a morning bar, and I put a lot of citrus, a little peppermint in there, just to kind of give that um, spark of the senses, you know, kind of give you that refreshing wake-up feel, um, mm -hmm. hence the name Awakening, you know? And then um, I did the Astral. Astral has the um, lavender, holy basil, and lemon, and I, I use those three ingredients together. The lavender and holy basil are very good at... Um, relaxing the body all the way from the sense to applying it on your skin and then the lemon just gives it that little bit of twang to it you know to to help spark the senses a little bit so astral it's a more of a nighttime soap you know you um, yeah. use that after a hard day's work you get home and take that and to help relax you mm -hmm. um aether when i think eighth of ether I, I think like i think of just like um warm glowing you know and it's that outer space of the of the above the terrestrial universe. So I just think of like um, you know almost kind of like a in in front of a in front of a fire in wintertime vibe. You know, like you're you're just very warm. So I used um, I used the cinnamon, lemon, um, honey, and beeswax in there. Along yeah, lemon. I said lemon. Um, and it just gives it that really warm, almost kind of like a a fall feel to it, you know? It, it's, it reminds you of sitting in front of a fire or something like this. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, and then the Gaia bar, I made the Gaia bar as a celebration of Mother Earth, this beautiful place we live. Um, and I made it with uh, three different aspects to it. So I used mineralized uh, Celtic sea salt, which, um, you know, most of the salts that you buy in normal stores don't have any kind of nutritional value to them. Um, but also the Celtic sea salt is a part of the sea, you know? Um, so it's very, it's very healthy for you, for your skin to intake. And then I also uh, mix it with rosemary, which gives kind of that airy smell, more of like, like a higher altitude type smell. Um, mm. And then along with the Lang Lang essential oil, that's more of a very grounding and balancing kind of um, more of like a keeping you, keeping you tied to the earth smell. So I just, um, I put all these three earthly aspects together to tie the Gaia bar together, um, you know, and Gaia, obviously mother earth. So I wanted to use these three aspects in it, you know? Yeah, dude, that's a really good idea. I like that. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, man. And, uh, let's see, which one did I open up? I'm not sure. I think I opened up first was awakening. That's the one I've been using. Um, yeah, man, I really like it. I was like, uh, I wasn't sure what to expect. And it's like really like a super rich foamy lather. Like it's, it produces really well. You know, like some soaps, they just kind of, they give you like a really thin, like. It's almost like a filmy type. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, one, this one's like really robust and yeah, it smells great. I, I, and and I, I actually really uh, enjoy the like, um, I mean, I guess my skin's kind of tough. I don't know, but like I, I like in, like the scrubby like feeling effect of it. Yeah, absolutely. And you're not the first person to tell me that, you know? Yeah, um, I, mean, I was I happy. Have, just, like, have, oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say, I wasn't sure, like, by looking at it, it, it looked like it was going to be just smooth all the way through. And, like, on one side, it kind of is. It's, like, almost like the sediment, like, sort of, like, settled to the opposite side. So, yeah. like, one side, I don't, and I, I don't know if you meant to do that or if that was, like, a happy accident. But, like... One side is kind of smooth and the other side is like really rough. So, yeah, it was actually <laughs> kind of a happy accident, honestly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I guess you can get the best of each world if you wanted to this way as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. I plan to I plan to have them more consistent um, here in the future, so it'll be all stretched through the soap more. Uh -huh. um, and regardless, like even if it's all stretched through the whole soap versus being condensed to one side. 
it's still going to give you that very exfoliating feel, just uh, more all through the soap, you know? So yeah. I think, um, you know, again, it was a happy mistake. And like for you, per se, your skin, like you like it, you know? Yeah. Uh, but like for me, my skin's sensitive. I can't really scrub on my skin with that so much, you know? Kind of sure, hurts sure. my skin. So I actually use a loofah or washcloth when I use them. Mm. Um, but in totality, I feel like these aspects definitely are a big trigger for the exfoliation. Um, another big part of these soaps is the um, coconut oil that I use in them. You know, most most um, kind of makers that use coconut oils, stuff like this, it's um, it's desiccant coconut oils, which means it's already dead and dried out is what they press the oil from. I actually um, this this coconut oil I use is from living coconuts. So um, this also retains a lot more mineral value for your for your skin. And it, again, it's another um, contributor to how it makes your skin feel so good, you know. Mm. Um, and I feel like it's very important that I, that, that, um, aspect is used in the soap. Um, and I know the coconut oil also retains all the nutritional values of the essential oils and the San Pedro. It all infuses together very well, you know? Yeah, for sure. It does, man. It like the consistency and the, um, yeah, the consistency and the and the feel of it is great, man. Um, I was kind of, I wasn't sure what to expect because I knew you were you were new at this, but you know, um, I I used to create CBD products back when CBD was first kind of a thing and okay. it was really popular. Um, and I was like, I had no idea what I was. Doing. I was like, you know what, whatever. I'm just gonna try it, see how it goes. And uh, I did, and I I didn't really have to play around with it too much to kind of to kind of find the sweet spot. I I feel like. Sometimes like life kind of just presents you these things that uh, you're supposed to be working on and um, you're not sure. But if you like just shoot at it and give it your best shot, it turns out really well. And, and I feel like your product's already super solid. I'm sure like in the future, you're going to be refining it and learning better methods and things. But for a first run or a first, you know, like a prototype run, you're doing pretty good so far, man. Awesome. I greatly appreciate that, man. And yeah, there's definitely going to be, um, there's definitely some little things I, I already know I need to work out. And I know there'll be more down the road too. Um, but yeah, as you said, it's my first run. Um, I as well, I'm, I'm just super happy about the whole product itself. You know, the whole concept, how I even came up with all this. <laughs> you know, it's just, like you said, you know, sometimes the universe just um, presents you with these things. And if, as long as you shoot at it, um, you can really build off of it, you know, and that's basically what happened here. You know, um, yeah, like I said, I, but the first reason I made the soap was just so I could try it. I just I thought it would be very good. And it was so good that I was like, shit, I got to share this with the world, man. This is great. <laughs> Hell yeah. And uh, <laughs> as soon as I saw you on social media, I think we're in I think we're in some kind of tr tri show serious group or some San Pedro group. I can't remember. But I saw you made a post. I was like, this looks interesting. Like, oh, OK, that's how you caught on to me. I'm pretty sure that's how I found you, yeah. Yeah, I'm in all kinds of those uh, Trichoceres groups and stuff, so. Me too, man. Um, I'm a collector as well. And and, and I want to talk about that further on, about, like, what it is about this cactus that makes collecting it so, like, people are fanatical, like, cultish about collecting this cactus. I'm <laughs> yeah. not so much, but I get it. I mean, I love it. It's beautiful. It's aesthetic. And it also has magical properties. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, I saw your I saw some post in a cactus group. I'm pretty sure. And I was like, this looks interesting. Let me see what this is. And I saw I like I could tell by your by your uh, page that you were just getting started. Um and I was like, man, this sounds like something I would really like to try. So my initial thought was like, I'm going to I'm going to hit this guy up and buy some. And I was like, well, wouldn't it be cool to like promote on the podcast and then like just get soap for that i was like yeah that okay that would be badass let's see if he's into that yeah so, man that totally stoked me out i was so um i was so appreciative and happy that you offered that you know i was all about it and i wanted to make sure um we would both be happy about it on both ends you know because i feel like this is a great opportunity for me um and i do greatly appreciate being here absolutely man uh i i I'm happy to support things like this because, like I said, I've done these kind of things several times in my life, and um, they've all kind of gone eventually gone defunct for me. But that's for lack of my own like 
engagement with them or or uh loss of interest over time the only thing that remains is the podcast yeah um, but it won't be long i'll get into some other new shit like i'm always like doing something like that well you know it, you have to keep going until you find that one specific niche you know and and that's and you'll you'll know you'll feel it springboard the ideas will just come naturally and the want to pursue it is natural you know and that's yeah. really, that's how i feel about these soaps like yeah. and i options are are limitless to of things to do with it you know uh -huh. uh, yeah it's just a it's a whole beautiful heartwarming experience so far all the I, way from from making the soap to um hearing people's feedback it's just it's really amazing yeah yeah and, and are you getting pretty good feedback so far people it's I, it seems like something most people in this space would be interested in. I mean, if someone like me is interested in it, I can, I can only imagine that a lot of people would be interested in something like this. Yeah, I, I've uh, out of um, every, all the feedback I've gotten, it's been very positive, very good. I have some people that are that said they will never buy store soap again. You know, and they're just going to get soap from me for now on. Um, but I am still fresh at it. I'm still new. I feel mm. like there's a lot of people that I still need to touch. Um, you know, I, there's a lot of people that even in the Trek of Sears groups and stuff that don't know about me still, I'm sure, you know? Yeah. So, so there's still a lot of momentum to be gained. Sure. Uh, you know, the wheels are, have just started spinning and I'm looking at different kind of market aspects with it and stuff, but, mm -hmm. uh, I'm taking it kind of baby steps at a time, you know, I'm not trying to overwhelm myself so quick. Um, yeah, it just kind of. Taking it as it comes, but with a nudge, you know, kind of nudging it too. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, not trying to take a dive. <laughs> See, that's been one of my downfalls in my previous, like, um, I don't know, entrepreneurial um, attempts is like, I get so obsessed about like certain things. And then like, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of like, like with, for instance, my CBD company, I kind of like uh, stretched myself too thin because I was like, I had so many great ideas. I would like want to produce all these products. And then I had a shit ton of these products, but like only a handful of my products actually sold. So it was like, I ha and I, I still believe that these were good ideas, but I mean, there was only like two or three products that were main money makers. And I had ended up creating this like entire like, comprehensive line of products mm -hmm. um, and i just couldn't keep up with like producing this shit plus working i think i was just out of school at the time so i was working like a full-time regular job and trying to handle this on the side but uh anyways I, it was a shitload of fun <laughs> yeah yeah and i but i do agree with you you know you got to be careful with overwhelming yourself because then you can lose your drive through it too um because like you said, you know, you make all these creations, but you're only selling a couple types of them. It can be discouraging, you know. So, um, yeah, that's what that's another reason why I'm not like I mean, I could I next batch. I can make five different new types of soaps if I wanted to. But sure. I'm just take it nice and slow so that I actually hone in on each one of these soaps precisely how I, I feel they should be. And, and also to give people the time to warm up to these different kinds, you know. I don't want to come out tomorrow and be like, oh, I have 30 different types, you know, because <laughs> yeah. not only is it overwhelming for me, but also for people that are interested in the product, too. So um, keep it simple. As you said, people in the uh, psychedelic communities, um, there's it's hard to think that people wouldn't be attracted to this stuff. Um, yeah. Just because the, pro the, the ingredients used and um, the meanings behind the themes, it all just fits so well, you know? Yeah. I'm gonna be definitely using that to wash off before my next uh my next journey for sure. I I don't know. I I really enjoy things like that, like um, new ideas with kind of these ancient medicines. Um, so I don't know. For for me, it's just a really cool concept, and, and the product is really good too. So it's a win win. Absolutely. Well, you know, there's there's so many like big manufacturers out there. There isn't no heart putting in being put into what they're making. And they're just they're just out to take your money, you know. Um, it's nice to find a, a good quality handmade product by someone who um, really puts their intention into it, um, versus you know just some mass-produced something that um, winds up becoming to not even be um, that really satisfying. More, it can it can even 
take from you than than what then it should be giving to you you know and yeah. that's that's another big push for me is like I make sure that I cleanse the soaps with sage. I say blessings to them so that um, people are welcoming a positive energy into their house. You know, um, mm-hmm. I just feel like these kind of things and even ma- under the making the soap and under, under good intentions. I just feel like these type of things are very important, especially when you're when you're talking about people welcoming these things into their home. You know, um, yeah, I'm a very I'm a very energy um thought person so that's another kind of important aspect i feel with these soaps yeah and there's you know there's been like in the last few years this movement towards like um more natural based body care products i guess and it makes sense man like so so often if you i mean if you were to buy like your average pack of soap bars at the drugstore or walmart or whatever if you read the ingredients in it, like it's all just alien gibberish. It does, none of it is like anything real. It's all just a string of chemicals. Mm-hmm. And you can feel like, dude, just look what it does to your shower. Like it fucks up the shower. Like when it, you know, it like it makes rings and like corrodes stuff. Right. It's like this cannot be good for putting it on my hair and my skin. Like I can't I, understand I, how this would be okay. When I first, uh, when I very first started doing these soaps, I went to like, um, I went to Whole Foods and I was just looking at all their soaps, looking at the ingredients in them, stuff like this. And, you know, they, they have like titanium oxide and just, you know, like you said, these crazy gibberish, um, um, chemicals and metals and stuff. And it's just like, you know, how can this be good for you? Um, Mm -hmm. it's more of like, um, you know, it's it's more of a a bandaid over the wound versus stitching the wound, you know. Um, it's it's not healing for you in any ways. It's just um, it's just putting it over you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, yeah. yeah. I, you you can I, smell it. It's like it, it's like an overwhelming like chemically smell, and and not even just soaps, dude. Like any, almost all like m- like mass produced fragrant items. It's like Ugh, it just kind of makes you nauseous like it's so it's overpowering mm-hmm. yeah that's why I, that's um why i made these soaps pretty subtle in smell too um mm-hmm. just you know I, i'm not a fan of of over pungent um anything whether it's cologne or um or soap or shampoo i don't want to be smelling someone from a mile away um, <laughs> you know it's nice to have the slight the slight scent just to um spark your senses and hey, if, if you got someone that close to you, then they them too. You yeah. Know? It's not meant to just um for everybody to just, you know, smell you down the street, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, man. Um that's that's funny. I want to talk a little bit more about San Pedro in and of itself. Um because I think it, it's kind of one of the more elusive plant medicines, I guess, or one of the less popular, I would I wanna say. But uh, I was introduced to San Pedro probably sh- very early on in my psychedelic interest. Like, um, I remember it was probably 2008-ish, 2009. So it was kind of the days of the internet was just still a baby mm-hmm. for the most part. And there was a lot of like, uh, what was that website? Arrowid. Do you remember Arrowid? Yep. They're still it's, around. Yeah, it's still around for sure. Yeah. Um, but back then it was like this, and it still is, but I'm sure it's uh, vastly updated. I haven't visited it in a while, but I used to religiously be on that website studying like how to extract like LSA from morning glory seeds yep, yep. And, and get mescaline from San Pedro because uh, I don't know. I was always kind of interested in producing my own at that time i didn't think of it as medicine i just thought of it as like hallucinogenic drugs basically yeah um so i remember i got i i found somewhere online that shipped me like probably i don't know like 10 pounds of various cuttings of san pedro and at that time i wasn't aware that you could just like plant it and it would grow again you know i was just kind of ignorant to the whole thing yeah but I, I remember I did do like a mescaline extraction, if you want to call it that. And uh, I mean, I was at this point in my life, I was 17 or 18 years old and uh, I wasn't real smart. I'm still not, but I definitely wasn't back then. Um, 
I remember I was on my like the porch of this of this apartment I was renting in a college town and I had like these long yellow like fucking breaking bad gloves on and I was out there like playing with I don't even remember what chemicals it was at this point but I was like <laughs> trying to do some acid base extraction which right. I had no business doing whatsoever <laughs> and uh, I eventually cooked down some reduced some liquid and had a like probably like three grams of brown powder which i believe to be mescaline right right <laughs> so uh, i capsuled both like a gram and a half and i told my buddy i was like hey man i got three grams of mescaline um i'm gonna take it he's like i want to take some and i was like all right we'll do this together so if we you know like if i die we'll die together <laughs> you know <laughs> I was like, bro, this is questionable. Like, I'm telling you right now. He's like, I don't care. I want to take it. I was like, all right, let's do it. So we took our capsules and nothing happens. So I don't know. Fuck <laughs> 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 that up. Then I still had more of the cactus left. So um, I made, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to simplify it and make the tea. Mm -hmm. So I cooked down some tea and uh, for sure I had that right. I had the, the right amount I had reduced it properly, um, and it looked it looked good. It tasted like shit. I was like, okay, yeah, here we go. So I had made this tea, and I put it in my refrigerator because I had to go somewhere for, like, the weekend. And my plan was my next day off, which was going to be, like, that following Monday or Tuesday, was to drink this tea. So I go out of town for, I don't know, Saturday and Sunday, come back on Monday or maybe Sunday night. And the refrigerator's been, like, cleaned out, and my tea is gone. Oh, no. So I told my roommate, I was like, bro, did you see a big jar of, like, neon green shit in here? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, dude, uh, my mom came this weekend, and she cleaned out the fridge. She was one, because I had written, like, do not eat. Not like, you know, like, <laughs> uh, she was like, man, my mom was wondering what it was, so she just poured it out. I was like, God damn it <laughs> yeah so honestly dude i've never experienced huachuma or uh, san pedro i i've uh i've taken peyote with uh the native american church here in texas uh twice and uh those were both really beautiful gentle ceremonies but I, i've never experienced the full force of of the mescaline containing cactus uh at this point yeah, so San Pedro, I feel like what makes, um, I've never done peyote yet, uh, which I know is a, from uh, hearing from people is a beautiful medicine. Um, but San Pedro has so many different um, localities, you know, you got your Peruvianus, your Brigesi, your Pachanoi and all this stuff. Um, and they all kind of have their own characteristics to them. You know, which I which I don't know, I find to be very um, intriguing about uh, San Pedro. Um, and in my experience, you know, I've I've only mostly had Pachinoy and Brigesi. Um, and Brigesi is like, a, you know, it's like a firecracker. It, um, it it smacks you right into it. You know, I've actually heard people even say it's uh, Brigesi is a, almost a little um, similar in, in experience to peyote. Um and Pachinoy is more of like a slow and steady come up on it. And it, it's a fast, it's a long stretch, you know, so it's a long experience. Um, that's actually, uh, the, this aspect, and I, I'm, I'm anxious to work with more, you know, especially I want to try Peruvianus. Um, they say Peruvianus gives you more like the deep vision type of, type of experience. Um, so, yeah, I'm definitely curious to work with San Pedro more and the different types um, cause they do, they even, even by plant, like plant by plant, they have their own potency and it's not just the mescaline involved. It's also all the other alkaloids that bind with it. So, um, again, they're just very intricate with themselves. You know, every plant can be its own, even if they're from the same seed lot. Um, mm. so yeah, it's just uh, very intriguing to me. That's one of the biggest things that captivates me with San Pedro so much is how much of a how different they can be even from the same seed lot plants you know they can still be very diverse within each other so mm -hmm. uh, it's almost like a big rabbit hole you know of yeah. exploration. so that's that's really what really intrigues me with san pedro and you know the more i've talked i've talked to several cactus people on this podcast 
um, a couple of a uh, couple different people who were really into it. And, uh, you know, for me, my my kind of earth shaking um, like moment where I was like, OK, the, this is medicine. Like this is something beyond the psychedelic. It took I mean, I've been taking psychedelics for like almost 15 years, you know, just yeah. thinking of them as brain candy. And, you know, I'd had some very intense intense deep experiences with lsd and mushrooms but um even even though the the power of those um molecules i was still like i mean i dude i was tripping hard but it wasn't something spiritual to me it never yeah. was. and then, it was the same with me when i was growing up you know um it it never touched me like like san pedro has um, my first experience with San Pedro, it, it, it like, it showed me different chakra points in my body. I didn't even know what the hell was going on at first, you know, honestly, yeah. uh, I didn't know, I, I didn't know it was going to open me up in this way. And I just, um, yeah, it, it broke the whole barrier of using psychedelics, um, recreationally versus spiritually. Um, and my first San Pedro journey, it was with a Brigesi, Bouncing Bears Brigesi, um, that's what really started me on my spiritual journey, you know, is, um, is San Pedro. But before that I was eating mushrooms, had plenty of deep, deep experiences on mushrooms and LSD, but, um, nothing, nothing opened that gate for me like San Pedro has. Yeah. And I've heard people say that before. Um, for me, mine was ayahuasca. I went to Peru to drink ayahuasca and it was just so mind bendingly intense and, there's no other way to describe it other than like a religious experience. It was fucking insane. Yeah, I bet. And it, it changed me so dramatically and just, I sat with it twice, but just one sitting, I was like, I, I knew immediately, like I was never going to be the same, you know, that, that I was changed forever. Um, but I've had a couple cactus people on here and they, they say the same thing. They say, you know, they've told, they told me that they had, played with the psychedelics for years but they never kind of got the full blast till they t uh drank some uh huachuma or some uh, san pedro tea and yeah. that was really the one that like catapulted them into uh into the great beyond um and the couple times i've had peyote i did not get a breakthrough experience i pro i needed to do i needed to take more mm. And I remember when I was eating it uh, with the uh, with the Native Americans, I took like, I took what the sh the road man recommended for first timers, and I, I could feel it, and I was kind of like dipping my toe into the water, um, but like, I kind of heard it like whispering to me, it's like take next time it comes around, take more, take more, so uh, I took I, I I didn't quite double the dose, but like I did time and a half. And it was like, no, double, double it, double it. But I was like, eh, I don't know. Like, I'm going to like, yeah. I'm already in an alien situation. You know, I'm inside a teepee where there, people are chanting and singing. And like, it's already weird, right. sure, you know, <laughs> like, um, but, which of course, like, you know, the ayahuasca ceremony was 100% totally alien, like bizarre, like just to, just to be there sitting in that hut with no, with no medicine it would be super bizarre you know yeah, to, to I imagine, and i bet I, you know yeah. the thing about all these you know peyote san pedro ayahuasca um and even ibogaine and stuff like when you do take take that breakthrough dose i feel like um you know it it really does it changes your um it, it heals you in certain on like a cellular level um and i just use the word healing as um you know, like you said, changing you, it, it just, um, it kind of morphs you and, and, um, it's like it re re changes the synapses in your brain or something. Um, but it does, uh, it does take that breakthrough amount for sure. Or else mm. like, like you said, you're just dipping your toe in, you know, Yeah. Uh, but it's all very beautiful and magical. You know, some people we're all, we're all developing in our own stages. So, um, we all we all take it just how we should, you know, yeah, for sure. And, you know, I learned a lot through my years of like um, just experimentation and things like that. Like uh, my first psychedelic experience ever was with salvia. And it by by far to this day was the strongest 
most belligerent psychedelic experience I've ever had because I took like in in salvia terms what would be considered like a super unbelievably high god dose which I didn't even know I just, yeah. just listened to one of my friends he was like dude bong the whole thing it was 80 times extract oh and man he, and he put the whole gram in the bong he was like just burn the whole thing down bro just white wall it and I saw <laughs> Okay, like what you know, I'm used to like smoking weed. I don't under I have no clue what's about to happen right. to me. Yeah, you just went for it. And so I'm just like, okay, and I did it, and oh my god, dude, it was horrifying. Yeah. Um, and it fucked me up for like a week, dude. Like I could not get my sense of time and space, like how time works. Like I couldn't get it. It oh, took like a week for that to kind of like even work out. Itself <laughs> back out because it, it felt like i had been gone for so long and but i had only been gone for like 20 minutes apparently anyways wow i, I learned a lot through experimenting like uh, particularly that one i was like okay i need to know what drugs i'm doing from now on right yeah after that, that was <laughs> the scariest fucking thing i've ever been through T yeah. to this day it's one of the scariest things i've ever been through i can only imagine man i i smoked a nothing like that but i smoked a little a little bong rip of salvia and um i was standing up when i hit it and i felt like i was standing sideways and um i just the whole body feel i did not like and stuff so that's the only little experience experience i had with salvia just never cared to try it again after that you know just because I, I wasn't fond of it at all I've tried it a couple other times. Like uh, the one, the one time I actually kind of got something out of salvia, it was it was interesting. I actually, so I had this like little kit that I would kind of keep all my stuff in, and I had some DMT. So uh, I hit, I ripped this DMT, and I wouldn't call it a full breakthrough, but I got you know out there into the DMT space. Um, and as I was like kind of coming out of it, like opening my eyes and seeing the world again. Like I had this one specific pipe that had salvia in it because my one of my best friends really likes salvia for some fucking weird reason. I don't know why, but like he when he hits salvia, he just laughs uncontrollably, like hysterical laughter for like 15 minutes. Um, every time the same effect for him, hysterical huh. laughter, 15 minutes. Then he comes back. He's like, oh, my God, dude, that was amazing. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, bro, I, that shit does not have the same effect on me. Not me. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't know. I had this like feeling like hit the salvia, like hit the salvia. And I was like, what? D salvia right after DMT? Not a good idea. And it was like, just do it. Just do it. So I was like, okay, fuck it. Grabbed it. <sighs> hit it. Then I had this like complete out of, you know, salvia has want to do, take you out of your body, erase the fact that you just used a drug. You Now something bizarre is happening and you don't know why. Yeah. So I'm in that realm all of a sudden. I'm outside standing in my backyard like stargazing. I'm doing this for like two minutes and all of a sudden I get this profound like sensation that I'm somehow dead um and, I, and I'm like oh shit I am like I don't know how but I know I know I've killed like I'm dead and uh, so I started to freak out and I was like oh shit am I gonna be okay am I gonna be okay and it was like my bot my soul was out of my body but like my soul was in the backyard but my body was still on the couch in my room yeah and my soul kind of started to get like sucked back through the rooms of my house. Like I was like rolling along the walls and I, I got into my room and I saw my body was just like slumped over and I was freaking out. I was like, holy shit, I'm not going to make it I, like, and like something was just telling me it's going to be okay. Just stay calm. Just go get back in your body. And I was like, okay, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to trust you. I got back in my body. I was like, Oh shit. I'm like, <laughs> oh, and dude after that i just like i just like laid there on my couch and wept for like 20 minutes because i was so happy to still be alive like i was so grateful just to have had this like near i guess what you would call a near-death experience yeah i don't physically i was probably fine but psychologically i had to accept the fact that i was dead you know right which happens which happens sometimes in these uh, in these experiences. Absolutely. Um, you know, that's like Bufo. I've worked with Bufo for a little while now as well. Um, and Bufo, it, that's what it, it brings you to that white light, man. It is. It's like um, it's like it basically unbinds your soul and ego and brings you to to white to the white light, you know. And yeah. I couldn't help. I, you know, especially when I first started working with Bufo, I couldn't help but have that feeling like, oh, man, like. <laughs> 
am I going to make it back? You know, um, very intense experience for sure. And then, yeah, add, add a hit of LSD on that before before the experience. And yeah, very intense, bro, for sure. Holy shit. Yeah, you're, you're a wild man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. I tried Bufo. Uh, it's probably coming up on a year now. It's been about a year. Yeah, I think it was actually a year this month, maybe. Yeah. And uh, wow, dude. Wow. Um, it was super intense, super profound because I was terrified. Like I did not want to do it. I was really, really scared. Um, but as soon as like I, I faced my fear and took the hit, it like was just gone. It was not, not a negative sensation during the entire thing. It was beautiful. It was the most, one of the most beautiful experiences of my life. Um, yeah, it's very, it's very body feel. You know, you feel you feel almost as if you dissolve, you know? Yeah, for sure. Very, very powerful experience, no doubt. I am like so thankful. I feel so blessed to be able to um, have Bufo in my life, you know? I actually uh, have a couple toads that I didn't even seek out. They just came to me um, and they needed my care, actually. The person mm -hmm. who had them um, couldn't care for them anymore. So they just kind of appeared in my life, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, just uh, have, having them close and working with that medicine is just, I, I just feel, be, I, I feel like I'm blessed for sure to be able to have these things close to me in my life. Like, especially living all the way out here in Florida, like how did they find me, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. So uh, yeah, it's just, um, it's like, I look at it like San Pedro came to me when I was broken and then uh, Bufo came to me when I was alone, you know? And they came yeah. to me companions too so just a beautiful uh walk i've had with um when it comes to natural kind of plant medicine and and, and psychedelic medicine the natural stuff it's um it's almost like this stuff it just kind of attracted to me um after i hit that breaking point in my in my life when i was being destructive towards myself you know yeah yeah um I agree, man. Uh, I've kind of gravitated towards the natural, the natural stuff uh, here in the last few years. Since ayahuasca, man, it, that changed everything, you know. And and I've never had a stronger experience. Um, well, I've had stronger experiences, but I've never had a more important experience. Like my ayahuasca experience was just a, a pinnacle experience in my life. Um, and I've probably had stronger experiences. I I mean uh, that like. That doesn't really make sense, like saying stronger. Well, I, I understand what you're saying because you can have experiences that um that are are more kind of a uh, a uh, drastic in a visionary sense and stuff, but you can feel like you can feel differences in in your mind and body through through like a ayahuasca before um versus like like you said like smoking DMT and salvia, you know yeah. ayahuasca changes can change you on a cellular level. That's that's the big difference I feel like there is with these plant medicines versus um, the things we make, you know, um, it just really brings us back to our core more than more than like, say, LSD or something like this, you know? Yeah, I think LSD was definitely the one that showed me the kind of potential, though, because I had taken mushrooms a couple times and then I had had that salvia experience, which that was like. I just couldn't – that I just didn't have a framework for. I couldn't – that was like a one-off thing, like a fluke. I was like, I don't know what the fuck happened there, but I'm not doing that shit again. Yeah, I was but the same. I had two hits of acid at a, at a reggae festival here in Austin, Texas, and that was like mind-bending. That shit was crazy. I mean it was like all the, all the classic – psychedelic things like that people say like i was i could smell colors like i could taste sounds all that was happening like mm -hmm. everything the ground was just waving like i can feel it like it's not like i see it waving it's like i can feel everything like there the whole earth is just like waving <laughs> and uh it was like 16 hours and i finally kind of got the hang of it you know the first like four hours were just like trying to get a grasp on what was happening to me although it, I, and taking it in that situation with tens of thousands of people you know i wasn't prepared for that <laughs> I, I just wasn't prepared for that scenario um but uh it ended up being okay and it ended up being a it it, it really showed me like okay 
there's something here. Like that was the first inkling I had that these were stronger than just brain candy. But I still spent 10 years after that treating them as such, you know, oddly enough. Yeah, I did too, man. Um, yeah, I played with LSD a bunch and had, you know, mind bending warped, warping experiences like that too, you know? Um, but again, I've had, I mean, like you said, they can be strong, but, but they, but these, uh, plant medicine experiences can change you, you know? So yeah. there is definitely a difference. Um, but don't get me wrong. You can, you can definitely have mind blowing experiences with, um, with man-made psychedelics, no doubt. Um, but it's just, it's a, it's a different ball game. It seems, you know? Yeah, and you can feel it. Like you can feel. I mean, there's this very natural vibe to it, especially with ayahuasca. It was like my entire journey, my entire visions were all rooted in Mother Earth and plant imagery. And I mean, but just what was happening in the ceremony itself, like visitations of my dead relatives, like um, these like otherworldly beings working on my body and my mind, like yeah. physically like opening me up and working on me and uh, so much like high strangeness, but it all had this air of like very natural, like um, ancient feel to it. Um, and I never, I had felt that kind of like ancient nostalgia that one time on LSD, like I felt like this sense that my brain was so old like uh that my brain was this ancient machine that was like passed down from generation to generation it was a really weird like nostalgic feeling huh. but uh yeah the plants really triggered the whole like spiritual aspect for me for sure yeah. I, find, I i just find that to be quite amazing you know yeah. um how how, how the, it's the plants that bring us back to that ancestral deep nature feel you know, like like you said, it's not like you can't get these um, these feelings and kind of experiences from LSD and stuff. I have I have before too, but it's just a, on a it's a different ball game. It's on a different level, you know, and it can bring you to things like you were just talking about, like um, past life reconciliation. You know, recognition of of you know you being here many times, a long time, stuff like this. Um, yeah, it's just a different ball game in my eyes. Honestly, I don't, and I don't even um, touch any um, LSD or anything anymore. I um, I strictly stick to the natural stuff these days, just because of this kind of thing. You know, I feel like um, I I kind of sputtered out with LSD. I like I just started not. I fe I wasn't feeling like I was getting I was getting anything from the experiences anymore. Don't get me wrong, I was tripping and whatever, but it's like. Okay, I've seen walls melt. I've, you know what I mean. I've yeah. already, I've already had all these kind of experiences, and I'd come, I would come back, come out of it, just feeling like um, I get, I didn't get, I'm not getting anything. I'm not learning anything, stuff like this, you know. And yeah. yeah, after after many tries, I didn't give up on LSD that easy, you know. I after many tries though, I just kind of, I said I'm done, just because I I wasn't getting that um getting those learning aspects of anything anymore i feel like i just kind of ran my course you know tied my knot with it yeah yeah that makes sense man and then uh yeah i i mean i still have some some acid laying around and i'll eventually, I'll eventually chew it up one of these days but uh yeah, man, I don't know. I, I really enjoy working with the mushrooms, even in the micro dose range and the San Pedro. I have San Pedro powder and mushroom powder that I that from mushrooms that I grew. And uh, I make micro doses uh, out of them and, and I use them myself. And actually, dude, I gave uh, some of my micro dose mixture of, of it's like 14 different mushroom, a 14 mushroom wow. blend, a couple other things, plus psilocybin and uh, and uh, about a gram of uh san pedro powder i okay. gave some of those to my sister-in-law because she was having really really bad like postpartum anxiety and uh i gave her like a two-week supply and i was like take these like every other day for two weeks and see how it goes you know because she went to her doctor and they gave her a prescription for lexapro and i was like look i'm not a doctor but i can tell you i've i've used these microdoses. i've given them to other people with great success right and she and she told me like probably a week ago, she was like, you know, I took those two weeks of 
those those things you gave me and i haven't really had anxiety at all since that's amazing yeah like dude i'm telling you like this shit really works dude it's crazy like yeah and i love i love all the research they're starting to do on mushrooms and all this stuff because there are so many ways that people can benefit from these things especially people who have depression issues um ptsd all this type of stuff you know it's amazing what a little you know point point one five to point two five can do in someone's life you know just mm-hmm. taking that every other day or so it um, I, I totally, I am all about, uh, microdosing for mushies and even people, you know, I'm even for like heavy dosaging to, um, to clear, you know, some people just take a really heavy dose to reset themselves, you know, and, yeah. um, with some people, this stuff is totally needed, man. You know, um, sure. yeah, it's so beautiful to see people being able to get help from, from nature in this way. Yeah. I remember when I first started playing with microdoses, it was with an ex-girlfriend of mine, and she had like just almost crippling general anxiety. Like she couldn't ride, she didn't like riding in vehicles, she didn't like driving, she didn't like being in social situations. Poor thing was just like in knots all yeah. the time. So we started like that's initially how I started the CBD business, and she got some relief from that. But then I started to see the this a lot of this microdosing stuff come up. And so I was like, you know what? And I had grown mushrooms in the past years ago. I was like, okay, well, I guess it's time to dust out the old toolbox, bring out the old dusty toolbox. So I grew some and I made her some microdoses. And she told me like a week in, she was like, you know, it hasn't been this quiet inside my head in years. And I was like, okay, dude, like this, there's something to this for sure. And, and, and it. How great does that make you feel too? To think that you can help people, help people in this way, you know? It, I mean, dude, it, it feels like your life's calling, you know. To to hear some feedback like that, it's like, okay, this is what I do. Like, I'm an alchemist. Like, I, I, I am here to help produce these medicines that help enrich people's lives. And it actually led her to want to try bigger and bigger doses, and she did. She started working with mushrooms, and oddly enough. I be, I think that the mushroom, the larger mushroom doses is what led to the downfall of our relationship, um, which is in hindsight, which is OK with me now. Um, and it was OK with me then. It was painful, but I could see what she meant. But uh, I, she had she had one big mushroom trip where she probably took like an eighth, which for her was a, a lot. And uh, I knew when, when when she was when she when it was over, when she came back, that something had changed in her. And I was like, she's not going to be she's going to leave me. And I was right. She left me probably within a month. And, it, you know, it sucked. But uh, I was like, I know that she got what she needed. And uh, hopefully she just continues working with that so it, it, it can further enrich her life. But uh, yeah, so that was an interesting turn of events. But yeah, that is that is very interesting. But you know, sometimes it's like, um, you know, you can you can you can help someone, but and then they get they get what they need, and it's time to vibrate away, and it's yeah. just a natural thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like we we get what we need from things or people, and then we move on. Yeah, you know? it's almost like me with LSD. You know, I felt like I feel like LSD was a great. Um, you know, a uh, playground drug for me to get really get comfortable with psychedelics before I even touched any kind of plants, you know? Um, and I'm forever grateful for all of my LSD experiences because of this. Yeah. Uh, but but it, it came my time to move along, you know? Yep. And I guess uh, the mushroom told her something or showed her something. And it's all good now, man. Um, I, I, I hope she's happy and healthy, and I'm sure that she is. Um, but yeah. Uh, the the mushroom microdosing, dude. I've seen it in several people that I personally know have a really profound effect on their day to day life, and that's without ever having a psychedelic dose of anything. Yeah, you know, my yeah. sister my sister in law's taken mushrooms once and got the giggles, but she's not ever, you know, crossed that threshold. Right. Um. um so I like I loved I love creating microdoses and giving them to people and and hearing success stories. And I'm telling you, man, as many people as I've recommended to and given microdoses to, I've I've the story is always the same. Like it's either it's helped me a little or it's helped me a lot. It's never like I didn't feel shit, you know? Right. Yeah. 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 So beautiful, man. I'm so happy that um that these things are starting to be decriminalized in areas and they're actually doing research on 
I mean, and, and this kind of stuff needs to happen with cactus, you know, um, there, there needs to be more research and, and more academia on these, on all these plants, because, um, you know, we all, we all can, can get healing from these things and in all different ways, you know, yeah. we all have our own, our own calling, I guess you could say when it comes to healing ourselves with plant medicines and stuff. Um, and it's just not fair that a lot of these things aren't even researched for barely anything because they have them outlawed. And um, so many people can really use the help from these plants, you know? Yeah, I couldn't agree more, dude. Hey, man, I, we're going to have to cut this off. I got to get going to the gym and get on about my day. But before we go, man, uh, why don't you tell listeners where they can find uh, Through the Gates Soap Co. at, where they can uh, find you at, whatever you want to tell them. Of course, I'm going to link everything in the show notes, and I'm going to make like a like a promo announcement prior to the interview in the actual show. But uh, uh, just yeah, tell man. people where they can find you. Um, you guys can find me right on Facebook, uh, Through the Gates Soap Company um, on Facebook, or Through the Gates on Instagram. I also do have an Etsy shop, um, and it's called Through the, Day, Through the Gate Soap Co. Um, yeah, those three avenues you can find me. If you wanted to look me up personally on Facebook, Spirit Wisdom is the name. And yeah, hit me up, man. I'm, I'm more than happy to talk about not only soap, but many other things with you guys. Right on, brother. Right on. Well, dude, it's a pleasure to meet you, man. I'm Absolutely. glad that we uh, bumped into each other on the World Wide Web. And uh, yeah thing huh <laughs> hell yeah man so I'm, I'm fixing to go hit my workout and then go to work but in between that i'm gonna take a shower with some of your amazing soap awesome um, man. hell yeah i've even i got a fresh tattoo i've even been using it to clean my tattoo i don't know if that's recommended by doctors but shit it, it feels good to me <laughs> it does have microbial aspects to it so i'm sure it keeps it clean too yeah hell yeah man hell yeah <laughs> dude so man I, I i'm i'm a big fan of your product only after having only used it for a couple days um i'm super excited to have you um as as um some sort of partner for the show and uh Absolutely, man i'm excited to work more with you man Hell yeah, dude. I'm looking forward to seeing what you do with this. I think it's going to be something really cool, man. So um, we'll do this again later on when you're when you're running a huge multi-million dollar corporation. You can tell yeah, me about we'll, that. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> I appreciate the, the positive outlook, man. And thank you so much for having me again, bro. I, it was a real pleasure to meet you and to be here. Absolutely, man. It's a pleasure to meet you as well. Take care of yourself, okay? Yeah, you too. I'll talk soon. All right, bro. Bye.